Moreline Lager House presents Queen City Craft, hometown brewery. The craft industry is definitely exploding and I think it's, it's good. It's all about local. I think it's American. I think it's just an American thing. We're breathing life back into our soul, particularly our brewing soul. That's local. That's craft. Queen City Craft, hometown brewery. Brought to you by Moreline Lager House. This is one of the oldest beverages that mankind has had. It, it's fantastic. They have a beer if your buddy at the bar will put the phone away. It kind of pushes that away. And when you're drinking and playing a board game and um, enjoying conversations with your best friends, it's, it kind of puts the phone back in your pocket. Beer is life. <laughs> Everything that ever happens, you know, when you look back on it, it always happens like a friend sitting around drinking a beer. I think it's American. I think it's just an American thing. It's refreshing. It's cold. Uh, beer is easy. The thing I like the most about beer is it's a very social drink. For me, beer encompasses everything in life, you know, because everything I do every day encompasses beer, whether it's testing the quality of beer. Um, it's really all geared up to making sure the consumer has the, the best experience with our product. It's a, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> Beer is one of those really unique products that uh, are central to a community, and it's really the lifeblood and the soul of a community. Beer is not political. Beer is not religious. It can be, I guess, but it's this kind of center of community. So Cincinnati Brewing, uh, commercial brewing started on the riverfront, like our city. Very quickly became one of the biggest brewing centers in the country. All through the uh, uh, late 1800s, uh, Cincinnati beer was known far and wide for its quality. Uh, some of these breweries shipped their beer around the globe even. The fact that Cincinnati had 38 breweries here, I mean, that's just an extreme amount. Cincinnati was pretty much almost the beer capital of the world. Cincinnati has such a long and rich tradition of craft beers and uh, we were one of the top brewing places in America for many, many years and uh, we lost that unfortunately. So it really started with prohibition of course. That was the death knell for not only here in Cincinnati but across the country. However, afterwards we were bounded. We had a, a very large brewing scene in the 1930s and 40s, but there were a lot of national trends that were happening. Uh, consolidation, uh, bigger breweries buying smaller breweries. We had a great uh, run uh, all the way up to the big national brewers came in in the uh, 50s and they started eating away of the market share of the local breweries here in town. After Prohibition, they got to those beers because they were, you know, they were cheaper to make. They were the light, yellow, fuzzy stuff. Those beers are meant to get you drunk. And those beers uh, are not meant to be tasted either. They're meant to be served very, very, very cold. It numbs your taste bud. You can't taste them. If you can't enjoy a beer at room temperature, at least on some level, it's a bad beer. And that's what Americans took as being beer. That was beer to America. Those bigger breweries now have bigger advertising budgets and start looking to expand and grow bigger and kind of just bury local uh, breweries in that. And so by the 1970s, we were down to three local breweries and by the late 1990s we were down to no zero locally owned breweries. It made a big impact uh, on me that uh, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs and Cincinnati had a great brewing tradition. I decided to uh, come on the scene to uh, write what I felt was a wrong for Cincinnati and I resurrected all of the great Cincinnati beer brands and had a four-phase plan to bring back um, the, the brands to Cincinnati, bring the local ownership back with the purchasing of Christian Moorline. For subsequent years, we purchased all the other Cincinnati beer brands and then uh, repositioned the brands to make them much more relevant to today's consumers. Opened the Moorline Lager House on the riverfront as a uh, beacon of Cincinnati's uh, craft beer future and, and brewing future. And then uh, eventually uh, we opened up the uh, Christian Moorline Brewing Company uh, right here and over the Rhine. I was a former firefighter and it makes, it looks good in print. Broke down firefighter, buys broke down firehouse, builds brewery. The wife and I were in Asheville, North Carolina. Wasn't real thrilled with the job I had. I like craft beer and we came across this one brewery. A small tap room but a very large outdoor area and I saw a gentleman playing chess with a 23-year-old kid with dreadlocks, drinking beer, playing chess, and talking like they were the best of friends. And I told the wife then, if I can do this, I'm in. Adam, my son, made me decide to get into brewing. Um, it, it started as kind of half a joke a couple Christmases ago. And 
this area that we're looking at here used to be a dance floor and a stage. And, and he says, Dad, you know, brewery look, a little brewery would look good up there. And we were just kind of clowning around, kidding around. And, and I said, okay, let, I'll, I'll look at the numbers. You know, and I, you know, I did research on what all the other microbreweries do and, you know, how they opened and what their probable volume was, that sort of thing. And I ran the numbers and said, well, we can make this work. And so we did. <laughs> We had a vineyard uh, for many years, 1969, our great vineyard was started. Um, I think uh, the biggest influence, my three kids. It was probably 10 years ago that uh, they started talking about starting a brewery. So it took about seven years for me to think it was a good idea, good fit here, which now that I've done it, it's a tremendous fit here, it really works well. When I started home brewing, uh, I immediately fell in love with it and I looked at it as kind of something I wanted to try to figure out a way to do for a living. It never left my mind. It was always something that I kind of just wanted to get into and wanted to be a part of. So even through 12 plus years of working for the man, as they say, uh, it never left my brain and I was always kind of working towards a day where I could kind of put cast all that aside and, and go off into this business. Uh, we started our uh, manufacturing business in 91. We became a homebrew shop in 95, and we gave up the manufacturing in eh, 07 or so. And uh, a woman called me one day. She said she had this brew house for sale. How do I sell it? And I said, whoa, let's talk to me. So I bought her two-barrel brew house, and uh, we recently traded it in on a 10-barrel system. It was actually at the uh, invite of my brother, he, we, he was uh, very active with a new startup homebrewing club that was here in town. We went to a gentleman's house, which they were having a gathering to brew, and I just tagged along. Had a really good time with a lot of friendly people and asked a lot of questions. And after that, I just realized that it wasn't a whole lot of money to get started, and I've just been enjoying it ever since. And that's when I first started brewing is they got me into it. I blame someone else. The craft industry is definitely exploding, and I think it's, it's good. It's all about local. Uh, before, you could only find one or two breweries in a city, but now you have uh, multiple outlets that you can go get a fresh craft brew beer. It is a great time to open up a brewery uh, anywhere in the country. Uh, with close to 4,000 breweries now in the United States, uh, it's still, there's still plenty of room to uh, grow. Are we the youngest? You are the youngest. You are the youngest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It started as a rainy day beach conversation. Yeah. That's the there was beer involved. And there was beer involved. Yeah. Mike and I are brothers-in-law. Four or five years ago, we kind of lost track at this point. Almost joking around one evening, said, hey, you know, you like brewing beer. I'm a business guy. Uh, talking about how that would work and uh, thought maybe this was a cool idea. And we almost, we almost sort of laughed it off mm -hmm. at, at first. And then every time we sort of connected again. We said, hey, how about that brewery idea? Like, maybe there's something there. And started getting a little more serious and playing with it. And so there was, there was no craft beer renaissance yet. And we just sort of thought, hey, that'd be a cool idea to try to bring craft beer to Cincinnati, which now looks almost funny in hindsight. Yeah, we're, we're very kind of early on in the process in terms of construction. We've, been, uh, we've had a contract signed on this place for a while. It's kind of a joke in a brewery that everything takes twice as long and costs twice as much, which might be understated. It's still plausible we'll open this year. More than likely we'll be opening it next year. Uh, it, it's really great to see the range of things that people are doing and that appreciation of it. I think just as a whole is that there's just an energy in Cincinnati that we haven't seen in a while. We lost our history and our heritage and it's been a long time that we are comfortable coming back to that and starting to celebrate that again. Bringing back that good craft beer, uh, it's really exciting to see. Moreline Lager House presents Queen City Craft Hometown Brewery, sponsored by Tap and Screw Brewery, Paradise Brewing Supplies, The Brewery District, Hofbrau House Newport, Listerman Brewery, and by Blank Slate, Nine Giant, Old Firehouse Brewery, and Cellar Dweller. We'll be back in a moment with Queen City Craft Hometown Brewery. The Moorline Lager House, named Best Waterfront Dining by City Beat and Diner's Choice winner by OpenTable.com. Come down next to the stadiums and smell Riverfront Park or visit us online at MoorlineLagerHouse.com to see our full list of house-brewed beers. Craft beer just become so popular in 
the, the big thing about craft beer is the fact that it's locally made. I think that's why a lot of people support it so much. It tastes better than just normal beer. You know, you can get a bit more imaginative with uh, ingredients. There's more diversity in flavors, and where, where it's just normal lager or beer, or whatever. It's just it, most of it tastes the same. I absolutely drink craft beer. I very much like it because it's unique. It's not like the regular Budweiser, just water. Craft beers are always so unique. When I look at what we're doing here at Christian Moorline and look at what they were doing in the 1800s, what did that word craft mean? Was it craftsmanship? Was it a, a craft product? Or what did, what did it mean? You know, they were making beer that they thought was the best quality of the day. So is that what craft is today, is making the best beer, the best quality of the day? Really the, the best compliment someone can give me is not that we make the, the, the best beer, which obviously is a great compliment in itself, but is that the beer that they're drinking is interesting. And it really pushes the boundaries of something they didn't think that they could have before. That's the definition of what craft beer is. Not making the same stuff that um, everybody else is making, but making stuff that really push those boundaries of what you think is possible. I don't like to dismiss anything as being non-craft, because there's a craft in everything. Some beers may have a little more craft to them than others. As with any business, you get to a point, especially in manufacturing, where you, know, you just at some point you just become a factory. So at the point where you become a factory and it's kind of and you start talking about your beer in terms of product, uh, you know today we've got to get in and we've got to make this much product. Uh, I think at that point some of the craft has kind of left you a little bit. But again, there's some craft in in, in everything. To be a craft brewer is something that you make yourself, crafted yourself. And I know the big guys make their stuff themselves, somebody makes it. But I think it to be more of a local product. Something that you can see and talk to the guy who actually made it, who may have come up with the product, what ingredients he's using, you can talk to him. We want to make a consistent beer and one that's very drinkable for the consumer. You don't want beer coming halfway across the country. You want to go to your local brew pub and Hopper House, since they've been around since 1589, you would consider us the craft beer of Bavarian Kings because it's still considered craft even back then. Craft brewing to me means the ability to showcase what I am able to do. You know, all of us brewers take pride in that. When we put that beer out to the public, it is my beer. It's, it's, I'm proud of it. It's like my kid. You know, the biggest thing for me, being a brewer, is I made that. It's my sweat. It's, it's, it's our just sweat and back into it. It's, it's a hot industry. It sounds really easy. Hey, I'll brew beer for a living and I'll have free beer forever. And there's a lot of work that goes into this stuff. Brewing is hard work. It's a very physically demanding job. Some serious heavy lifting can come with a job. Uh, you know, you're lifting something that weighs, you know, half as much as you do. We come in in the morning, we, we, we fire up the hot liquor tank, get brew water ready, um, weigh out our grains crack them, and then, you know, mash in. Every time we make a batch of beer, I'm always thinking, how are you going to be consistent? Did we follow the recipe correctly? Did we get the boil times? Did we get the gravities? That's the easy part. The harder part is staying in the brewery and making sure the tank is clean, the hoses are clean, the lines are clean. Is it all consistent? The first thing you find out about brewing is it's you do very little actual brewing. It's mostly cleaning. Probably... 80% of brewing is actually cleaning vessels and sanitizing them in kegs. We are meticulous on cleaning, but then again, if you come into this brewery, look around you. We are the Benihana of brewing. There's no glass walls, so it's all out in the open. Our philosophy is it, pretty simple. Try to get the very best ingredients, the best practices, either cleaning and brewing, it's going to be consistent every single time. That's what people expect. Our brewing philosophy is probably a little different than a lot of uh, other guys out there. We don't brew traditional styles. We try to do a lot of different things from what everybody else is doing. So when we sit down to, to make a new beer, we kind of start thinking about it in terms of flavor profiles. and you know, What do we want this beer to taste like? What components do we want it to have? So we really deconstruct uh, the idea of that recipe back down to a blank slate uh, and then build it back together uh, in different ways and different pieces and components uh, to be what we ultimately want it to be. My brewing philosophy is that, you know, take pride in your work, take pride in your product, um, and don't ever be satisfied, you know, don't, don't be satisfied with what you're doing. And, that, you know, and it should be like that in life, don't ever be satisfied with what you're doing. You're always living your best day tomorrow. So that's my philosophy, you know, 
we're always going to make our best beer tomorrow. The main thing I want to do is to make great beers consistently. That's the main thing. As long as you make the beer, they will come. Whether you're in a barn or whether you're in a multi-million dollar brewery that's out there, you got to make good beer, and you have to make it all the time. It can't be hit and miss. You can't have one good batch, one bad batch, or two good ones and three bad ones. you got to have consistency with it. The brewing philosophy here at Listerman's has mainly been let's focus on the details. Let's focus on the fresh. Let's focus on um, new. Let's get out of um, our comfort zone when it comes to beer. Sometimes you see something and you like it and you like the taste of it and experience about it and you want to, to do your riff on it. And the other times you're looking for something that you haven't seen before that you want and, and you're creating it and you're inventing it. So what, what we're always racking our heads against the wall to, to do is to do something new, um, but most of all, good. We want all our beers to be approachable by most people. So instead of getting wild and crazy and doing something extreme, we'd like to do something really well with, within an accepted category. And so we just, we'd like to take the conventional styles and do more of a twist on them and go out to extremes. You know, we're not making the same beer that everybody else in the town is either. You know, we have a peanut butter beer, we have a hazelnut beer. You know, people tell us every day when we walk in the door that we're crazy for making those. And I say, thank you. Nowadays, it's even going to pepper beers and using all kind of different truffles and every all these different uh, ingredients. It's not necessarily my cup of tea. I don't necessarily seek those beers out on a daily basis but I you know what if that's what you want to try give it a good try if it doesn't turn out you end up having to make something else there you but go. you're still making beer that's the idea every day I learn something new about beer about the community about what beer can do for a community with a community uh, how it brings people together in, in new ways it never ceases to amaze me it, that's the way this community is the brewing community in town is it's an open book. Everybody will help the other guy out. There's some local brewers that we have, you know, that, that have been on my hotline, and they, the guys will help you at any time. It happens across the board. I mean, it, it, I've had to borrow grain and hops before. Um, they've come and borrowed grain just the same, and it's just, we're not here to put the other one out. We're all in it because we love it. The standard is a lot higher now than it was four years ago, five years ago, even in Cincinnati. Just over the last three years, there's been a dozen breweries pop up. So we have to keep that standard. Part of the reason that we are such a tight community is we are, one of the things, our objectives is to build up the craft beer community in Cincinnati. So the more craft beer followers that we have, the, the more business that we all get. And if one of the local breweries is making bad beer, it's a black eye for all of us. It's not just your brewery. Because, you know, somebody who's, uh, who's new to the craft beer, that if they come into your brewery and they have a bad beer, it's, they, they put it as, oh, that's craft beer. And that's not craft beer. That's a bad beer. There's friendly competition, but by and large, we're friends. Right. We drink with a whole lot of them. And we all get along. We all help. If, if, if somebody has a question, where can I get this? They can't get a, a certain grain, a certain hop, a certain adjunct. They send out an email. Or if they're short, and we've done it, we've helped others where we're 50 pounds short on a certain grain, anybody got it, you'll get emails, come pick it up. If, if we need something, you know, and somebody's got it, they're more than willing to give it to us. You know, it's happened many times uh, where they've helped us out, we've helped them out. So it's a real tight-knit community there. You know, good people. Moreline Lager House presents Queen City Craft, hometown brewery. Sponsored by Tap and Screw Brewery, Paradise Brewing Supplies, The Brewery District, Hofbrauhaus House Newport, Listerman Brewery, and by Blank Slate, Nine Giant, Old Firehouse Brewery, and Cellar Dweller. We'll be back in a moment with Queen City Craft, Hometown Brewery. The Moreline Lager House, named Best Waterfront Dining by City Beat and Diner's Choice winner by OpenTable.com. Come down next to the stadiums and smell Riverfront Park or visit us online at MorelineLagerHouse.com to see our full list of house-brewed beers. Cincinnati has 52 neighborhoods and every neighborhood has its own culture and tradition, so 
I think to have these little craft beer breweries in different neighborhoods is very important. I think it's like a catalyst, it's a domino effect. When you have a successful business, you're gonna have more and more coming in. So I think it's very important, not only for the city in general, but also for every neighborhood to have that. I think it just excites the neighborhood. It just kind of represents the city and what uh, I think a lot everybody in Cincinnati is a big fan. It's our town. We live here. The wife and I have a philosophy. You do the right things for the right reason. We support the community every way we can. I probably give away more money than I'll ever make back, but I don't care. They've supported us, and it's the right thing for the right reason. One of the things that I'm really proud of is uh, I've been with the Brewery District uh, Community Urban Redevelopment Corporation from, from almost their beginning, and, and now we're putting together a Cincinnati Brewing Heritage Trail, uh, which will celebrate uh, all of the previous brewers, and, and we feel that it's important to celebrate the past so you can definitely taste the future. It's going to celebrate our history in so many different ways. As we walk through this neighborhood, you see the buildings, but we're going to tell those stories with signage, with uh, bronze medallion wayfinding that's permanent, with uh, public art, with a digital interactive experience where we'll take your smartphone and literally x-ray underground and see those cellars underneath your feet, take a guided tour, and share this history both not only with us locally and retell those stories that have been lost over the years, but share it with the globe and, and help us take our place back at the forefront of Cincinnati beer and, and, and brewing history and, and let us celebrate what makes us us uh, with the world and use that to our advantage. It's all about helping the community, utilizing the, the local businesses and helping the local business, wanting the community to grow. So, you know, we're growing with it and vice versa. Uh, and we do that with the beer and I think that's local, that's craft. I think it's very important for the local community to support your local brewery. I like it that they believe in the neighborhood and they have a product they're willing to put their name on it and that, that's why I'm here, to, to support them. And we want this to be part of a community, right? Like when we started off trying to figure out where we we're going to put Nine Giant, we knew we wanted it to be something smaller and much more intimate and really like in a neighborhood. We're really hoping that people are going to walk to our place of business. We want to have that type of community, those type of regulars to be, you know, part of the culture that is what is going to be Night Giant. I think craft beer is fulfilling uh, a need that was has been there for the longest time. It's just now accessible. I don't want to say it's going back to the, to the roots. I want to say it's just going back to the, the way people prefer. So it's not some new thing. It's always been there. We just now have awesome people out there making it possible. I think the culture of the local is coming back. You know, before people didn't put any value on made local, didn't, you know, and I think the value of made local is coming back. Um, and I think that is what's kind of feeding the craft beer scene, the local craft beer scene in Cincinnati. You know, people want to drink local beer. They want to drink, you know, good, good local craft beer. And, and that's what we're able to supply to them right now as a whole. Well, there's this local thing going on, which is important. And I think people are starting to realize that uh, the major labels, Bud Millers, uh, are, are not really very good, you know? People like trying it even if it's even if it's not necessarily something they like, they'll, they'll have one just to, just to see what it's all about. We used to be like 70% domestic beer to like 30% kind of craft beer, and over the past year or two it's probably, probably flip-flopped. Before we even became a brewery, we were a bar and restaurant, and at one time all we sold was the big domestic brands, and then over a year before we became a brewery, we started putting more craft on, and it Craft grew from 0% of our sales to about 28% of our sales before we even became a brewery. I want 100% uh, market share. 100% <laughs> market share. Um, I don't really want any, any more regional breweries. I want local breweries. I don't want you to be able to buy my beer in Chicago or Milwaukee. I want you to be able to buy my beer at the bar right down the street and at this bar. You know, I really want it to be more neighborhood and community focused than the try to take over the world aspect. We focused our concentration of what we did more in the city, uh, but we did have beer that would occasionally go to Dayton or into Northern Kentucky or to kind of more far flung places. Uh, but we've just found that as demand has grown here in the city, uh, we're running out of beer at the neighborhood bar down the street. That's had us on tap ever since they opened. But then we're also we're selling beer in places in Dayton that I've never heard of. So we kind of made the decision that we need to make sure that Cincinnati proper is taken care of and has all the beer that it needs before we start selling it to other places. I like to 
keep expanding and be able to add more fermenters and then therefore uh, set up canning lines and be able to, to put more beer of our beer into the consumer's hands. I still want to be mostly uh, local here. I don't necessarily want to take over the world. I don't want to go coast to coast. And now you know that a lot of people do, and that's fine if that's what they want to try and do. I want to work more on a local basis. I don't, if I get to be able to distribute on in the 275 belt loop, I'm good with that. Plan and hope I have is that we just continue growing at a pace and, um, you know, keep pumping out good beers. Um, you know, keep people have coming in and, um, you know, seeing their faces smile when they have them or they're having a good time here. You know, when they're sitting here in our tap room or out, I almost see them smiling and laughing and having a drink. We're definitely looking forward to the, to progress. progress. That'll be good because the progress. struggle has been tough. Yeah. You know, the struggle becomes real as you go through it. But yeah, I think you, if, you, if you lose that this early on, I think you're in real trouble. I mean, we're, we're, we're well into this, but we're well on our way and we're really excited about what's coming up in the future. I don't think this is ever gonna stop the craft beer industry. It's right. just, people's minds are changed. And especially with the generation that's coming into craft beer, it's the same generation that loves, you know, different food, it likes to experiment on different things, whether it's travel, food, art, and whatever else, or, or beer. So we're not going to settle for just your run of the mill. I feel like it's a great community and we're just in our infancy of growing as a craft brewing city. And what I would like to see is that in 10 years we're still a group of brewers that can all hang out, we have fun together, and um, you know we can all get together on causes that maybe we're either fighting as a group and move forward. The future of craft brewing, there's definitely going to be a few more opening up within the next year. I think we're anticipated around 30 within the next year. So I think that says a lot. I think for Cincinnati, that's huge. It's, it's fun, it's awesome. People recognize Cincinnati as being, oh, that's the craft beer city. And that's what, what brings people in and it's awesome. I feel very optimistic that uh, we will continue to carry the torch in the future on Cincinnati Brewing uh, and we are breathing uh, life back into our soul, particularly our brewing soul. This Moreland Lager House presentation of Queen City Craft, Hometown Brewery, was sponsored by Tap and Screw Brewery, Paradise Brewing Supplies, The Brewery District, Hofbrauhaus House Newport, Listerman Brewery, and by Blank Slate, Nine Giant, Old Firehouse Brewery, and Cellar Dweller. We hope you've enjoyed Queen City Craft, Hometown Brewery. Cheers.